So fast forward to my second semester as a freshman. Um, I'm studying for some exams. I pick up the phone as I always did. My parents and I, we talked all the time. We torched the phone lines. There was not a day that went by that I did not talk to my parents. Not a day went by that I did not have a conversation with them about life, about school, about gymnastics. My mom always wanted to know how gymnastics was going. Are you sticking the landing? Have you been hitting your beam routine? Have you been hitting your floor routine? So I picked up the phone like I always did, had a conversation with my mom on this night, on March 23rd, 2003. And then she passed the phone off to my father and we talked for a few minutes and then it was our goodbyes. Mom, I love you. Dad, I love you. You could hear them both on the phone say, we love you too, Lauren. I hung up the phone and uh, I remember talking to my, my roommate for a few minutes and set my alarm clock and quickly went to bed. Next thing you know, I wake up to the phone ringing on my dresser and I look at the caller ID and it said home. And I, I look at the clock and it's just after 3.30 and I, what's wrong? Like, why, why are mom and dad calling me from home in the middle of the night? So I'm hesitant. I pick up the phone. I said, hello. And it's my dad. And he says, Lauren, I need to talk to your brother. I said, dad, what's wrong? He said, Lauren, I just need to talk to your brother. I can't find his phone number. Please tell me. What's your brother's phone number so I can contact him? I said, Dad, please tell me what's wrong. And you could hear it in his voice, the heartbreak, the devastation. He said, Lauren, your mom died. What? What do you mean mom died? We just talked hours ago. It's the middle of the night. Everything seemed okay. I, I don't get it. Like, Dad, please tell me what happened. He said, Lauren, I can't explain it now, Pack your bags and get on the next plane you can. I will be at the airport to pick you up. So as you can imagine, I'm frantic, trying desperately to get answers. And all I wanted to do in that moment was run and jump in my dad's arms. So I packed my bags. I got a ride to the airport. I got on that plane. My plane touched down in my hometown of Roanoke, Virginia. And I remember sprinting through the terminal. Oh, I just, I just want to see my dad. Everything's going to be okay. My dad is going to make everything okay. He always fixed everything. He always made everything okay. So as I run out the door, I'm looking everywhere, looking for my father. And instead, it was my uncle and my cousin Justin who pulled up to the curb, and they get out of the car. We exchange hugs. There's a lot of emotion, a lot of tears in that moment. We get in the car and start driving. And, and I'm going through so many different scenarios in my head. And... In that moment, I thought, you know what? My dad is probably just taking care of things at the hospital. He will be at home when I get home. I'm going to see my dad soon, right? Well, I finally worked up the courage and I said to my Uncle Mike, I said, hey, Uncle Mike, I said, where's my dad? He pulled the car over and I can still, to this day, feel the gravel up underneath the tires of that car as he put the car in park and he turned around and he looked at me and he said, Lauren, Sorry, but your, your dad's passed away too. And it just cut me like a knife. What? Like, I, I, am I hearing this right? How is this even possible? I don't understand. I just talked to my parents hours ago and now they're both gone? Unfortunately, it would be months before we would find out what took both of my parents' lives. Both of my parents going to a pain management doctor struggling with chronic pain, both being prescribed various narcotics to help them cope with their chronic pain. But these were two people that got out of bed every single day with a smile on their faces. They did everything they could to get out of bed, put one foot in front of the other and live their best lives. But underneath it all, they were struggling. They were struggling with this chronic pain they were, they were dealing with. They were struggling with this addiction. They were struggling with this secret that they did not want any of us to know. It was a secret that they had been dealing with for several years and none of us knew. We as a family knew my parents were in pain, but we just did not understand the magnitude of it. And perhaps they didn't want to let myself and my older brother, Alan, into their secrets. They wanted us to think everything was okay. They wanted everything to be okay. 
and unfortunately, it took their lives far too soon. My dad, 52, my mom, just 45. How could this happen? And with all the questions, day in and day out, for months, and even now, 18 years later, I asked the same question, what happened? How did this happen? So as I have to move forward in my life, my new reality is now living my life without my two best friends, the two people that I love the most. How am I going to live my life without them? My new reality is setting in, but I really didn't have a choice. I had to keep moving forward. So my aunt and uncle, who kind of took me in as their own, said, Lauren, you've got to go back to school. You have an obligation to yourself, to your teammates, to your university, and this is what your parents would want. They would want you to keep moving forward. They would want you to thrive. They would want you to find success and to continue living out your dream as a collegiate gymnast and to uh, fulfill your career goals and aspirations. And so two weeks after laying both of my parents to rest, I went back to Rutgers. And let me tell you, it was a roller coaster ride. Uh, the ups and downs of trying to figure out how I'm going to navigate this new life, the, the, the pain of not having my parents there, figuring out how I was going to, you know, get by, how I was going to afford to live, to go to the grocery store and buy groceries and to, to, to buy toothpaste. And how, how am I going to do all these things without my parents here? Who's going to guide me? Who's going to help me when I'm down? Who's going to lift me up and lift my spirits up when I'm down? I'll tell you what, it, it, it was an extremely challenging um, journey. And as I'm moving through this journey, I started to realize that I have to take control of my own destiny. I was drowning in this anger, this fear, this guilt. I was drowning in this shame because I felt that my parents and how they died was going to define me. For so many years, I was so fearful of what people would think if they knew the truth behind how my parents passed away. If they found out that my parents passed away from prescription drug overdoses, maybe that would be a reflection of them as people and as me, as their daughter. I could never use the word overdose and addiction in the same sentence because I feared judgment. When I went in for job interviews, I feared judgment if they knew what took my parents' lives because I felt that that might be a judgment, a character flaw, a choice that they made, a poor choice that they made that reflected on me. And for the longest time, it was hard for me to realize that because my vision was once blurred, I have a story. I'm being entrusted as a sports reporter to go out there and tell other people's stories, and yet me, personally, I couldn't even share my own because I was ashamed of it. I was ashamed of my own story, but once I had the courage and the strength to stand up and own my story, own every single chapter of my story, it gave me the strength to walk up here on the stage today and share my story with each and every one of you. Because my story is important, your story is important. This is how we grow, this is how we build strength, this is how we move mountains through our stories.